Welcome to another Stalker Anomaly Gamma guide for all your needs in this amazing free game made by an amazing community of modders and enthusiasts of the Stalker game. Today is five things I wish I knew before playing the game. Let's get right into it. The first one is seeing items in the world. How do you know that's an item? Well, if you hold the use button or F and you're going around the world, I do, I do this when I enter a new building, a new area. You hold the F button and you can see items when they're in a certain distance from you. See that? How it says grooming kit? That's from holding the F button or the use button. Very important. Uh, I would not be able to live without it. And I've lost a lot of items by not knowing that. Second, going on this whole item thing, the wooden boxes you see around the world have items in them when you break them open and also the little medical boxes. They look like white little metal boxes, not really canisters, but metallic pelican cases. We'll put it that way. Always bust them open and when in doubt, pull the knife out and attack it. Even some doors in this game, you can bust down with a knife. Always use your knife to see if there are hidden treasures. Another tip that you can use, and something I wish I knew before playing the game, is you not only have keybinds in your normal area of keybinds, and I definitely think you should customize these as you see fit, but don't forget over in mod configuration menu. You have a whole separate keybinds over here in the top MCM keybinds, all keybinds. Now the ones in red obviously have a conflict. You do not have to go and change them all. But the ones you definitely have to change, and you have to change it every time you do a full install of the game, it's a type of updating the game. Sometimes you can update the mod pack just by updating the add-ons, and sometimes you have to update the entire full install. When you do this MCM keybinds, will revert. This one you always want to get rid of. My left shift is my run. So I don't want to be running and dropping items. So I switched that over to something I'm not going to use. And that is pretty much the only one I switch. But if you're having weird things happen, like you're missing items, I think it's because of that right there. And you should switch it. Another thing I wish I knew about Stalker Anomaly and Stalker Gamma is how customizable it is. There are people out there that in my opinion work for the AAA gaming community that LARP and pretend that they hate Stalker Anomaly. They pretend that they hate Stalker Gamma. How do you hate something that is a passion project and 100% free? I don't know, but guess what? If you don't like a certain setting in here, you are fully able to customize a great experience. Here's something that I do in every game. Gameplay, progression difficulty. These are changes that are made for each character, each one of your playthroughs. And in here, you can change things to make it a different experience. The thing that I change every time is right here. Limited amount of bolts. This makes it, if you turn this off, it makes it where you have unlimited bolts and you can make it through anomaly feels better. In real life, you'd be able to pick up a pebble, a stick, anything around you, and toss. That's my brain coping with why I have infinite bolts. If you like more of a survival experience, keep this on default. You'll have to buy bolts, find them. I turn that off, but guys, you can make this game any way you want. Backpack travel, disguise, gameplay difficulty. I highly recommend you adapt the game to your liking. Another thing that I'm always switching, right here, max carry weight. People that like a more hardcore experience, quote unquote, will drop this down to lower. I am a video game hoarder. In real life, I have a pretty clean office. I have a clean house. But in video games, I live my hoarding fantasies. <laughs> and I like to carry all the items in the game. I am constantly trying to figure out why I'm overweight. I'm constantly trying to figure out why I'm carrying too much stuff. But, hey, to each his own. Another thing I wish I knew before playing Stalker Anomaly Gamma, 
And this comes from a viewer in the audience. That's why it's important for you guys to comment on my videos because you might get into a video by giving great information. This is from Willis Littis and he says, any of the artifacts you can see just randomly on the ground have been added by the mods. This is our first trick I'm giving you. And let me add what I'm gonna say. In Anomaly Gamma, most, okay, of the artifacts you find that are non-radioactive to you, I'm gonna call them perk artifacts. They give you perks, all sorts of amazing perks, but they are temporary. The artifact will degrade as you use it over time and they will disappear. So you're gonna use these situationally. You have a big battle coming up, you equip one, by the end of the battle, it's gone, it's destroyed, it's, it's gone. There's another group of artifacts, I have one in here luckily. Let's open it so you guys can see. And this one's dosing me with beta particles, slowly. This artifact, okay, as you can see, this is a permanent artifact, we'll call it. They give you permanent buffs here and there, but these are meant to be made into other things. You open up the workbench, okay? If you go to crafting, you go to artifacts. You could see here that there's something called an artifact melter. So in this mod pack, you're gonna be combining artifacts, okay, into new artifacts, and these are the permanent artifacts. I'm just gonna call them. It's probably a bad word for them, but compared to the temporary perk artifacts, definitely different. So these are the ones that, and these are the artifacts you have to find, going back to what Willis said, let's take a look. They're added by the mods, they have no radiation output. The vanilla ones are hidden until close enough to reveal. You're gonna need a better artifact detector for that. I upgraded to this one. This one can find the more substantial artifacts better, the hidden ones. They all scale with radiation output based on rarity and condition. Radiation isn't reduced by gear and drugs. Generally way better than the mod artifacts, the perk ones I'm calling them. And a whole another aspect of the game with Gamma is collecting and repairing them with the artifact melter. So, definitely a whole nother gameplay loop for you to uh, play with. You're gonna be finding a lot of perk based artifacts. They're good to make money with. Check every anomaly field for artifacts. If you just have the echo locator, you're gonna just be finding perk ones for the most part, unless you get lucky. Another trick I wish I knew before playing this game is about the mini-map. I played this game for a week before realizing that we have a mini-map. You can activate it by default, I think, with the slash button, but again, this is something you can adjust in the MCM keybind menu. Mine's on forward slash. You can turn it on and off. Mini-map is very helpful, and you can also change it in the mod pack starting menu to a compass that's more immersive or the mini map up there, okay? Very important for your survival in this game and getting around if you're a new player. And finally, a trick that I wish I knew before playing this game is about the repair kits. Let me give you a couple tips rapid fire about the repair kits. Your multi-tool is one of your most important tools that you're gonna first buy because you're gonna use this to break down weapons, armors, etc. This multi-tool you will never have to buy again with this one simple trick. I don't have any on me right now, but I can show you because we're close to the farm. There is a, uh, like a whetstone, a sharpening stone, something of that manner that you can buy. It looks like this right here. They're called three-piece sharpening stone set for very cheap. Compared to buying a new multi-tool for 3000 you want to buy one of these and always keep it on you. Okay, and with this, this fantastic repair tool, you can repair your knife, so you'll never have to buy a knife again. You can repair your multi-tool, and you can repair a lot of other stuff. I suggest just saving it for your knife and multi-tool. It's gonna save you a lot of money. And then some more tricks about repairing. You get a basic tool set or you use a workbench, but you need basic tools, okay? And repairing here, for example, if I want to repair this, I wish I had a more broken item to show you. But when this is a lot more broken, these individual parts inside the item, just like a gun, your armors have parts inside them. 
and those parts can wear down and break and malfunction. And to repair the internal parts, you would need a repair kit of equal caliber. And it actually tells you right down here, and if you right click and go to detail, it'll tell you. But to swap out these parts, you'll need a light repair kit. To repair this, you can repair it other ways. But with the light repair kit and swapping parts, you will not actually use the repair kit. This is really important. If I use the repair kit normally, like if we had it, we right click, we go to maintain parts right here, and we'd be able to maintain the part. That uses a use of the repair kit. You definitely want to save the repair kits as long as possible because modifying, like we were talking about, swapping parts does not use the repair kit. And that's very important. The repair kits are quite expensive. For example, to make that light repair kit, we would need two of those glues, two of those glues, four sewing, and three Swiss Army knives. They all get used up to make you a repair kit of four uses. You see what I'm saying? You want to get the maximum use out of that. You want to be breaking down items and swapping items in and out of it. And last resort using it. Like the very first time you're playing this game, you get yourself a handgun repair kit, which you can buy from most repair traders. This handgun repair kit you can use to fix any handgun in the game. For the most part. So you're going to use that first one up unless you have parts. You might have some parts to swap out. I hope you learned a little bit during this. And the final little bonus trick is, in the mod menu, I have it where new items are highlighted. I'll show you where that is. Very important to me, because I'm always picking up stuff rapid fire, and I have no idea that I'm picking them up. And now, with this new item feature, it shows you exactly what items you pick up in your inventory. And you can find this under Optional, in the Mod Pack menu on the bottom, Mod 214, new item highlight. I love that. It's really helpful for me. And again, going back to the customization, you can customize so much stuff just with the mod menu alone. Down here under optional again, you have trader destockifier, which makes it harder to find items and traders, and trader overall, if you do not want the true gamma experience. I thought I would be clicking this. I actually like the gamma experience. It feels rewarding to repair your stuff and use it. I love it. Thank you guys for watching this video. If it's been helpful, hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. You guys are really helping the channel out. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching the video. And thank you again. Have a great rest of your day.